Well, I had to cut off my childhood best friend. And the reason I had to do that is because she tried to sleep with my fiance about, what, a month before I'm to get married? But guys, the reason I'm coming here to share my story is because there's so much more to it. And honestly, I need advice. Maybe somebody's been through something like this, but let me start at the beginning and walk you through this absolute nightmare. I'm currently experiencing some of the worst days of my life, and my wedding is only a month away. I've had to make a decision that has broken my heart so badly that I don't feel like I can recover by the time of the wedding. Let me explain. So I'm 29 and I've been living with my fiance for more than a year and was very excited to get married a few weeks ago. I have a great job, a great family, and a really awesome fiancé, so you can say that I was very happy with how my life was going. About a month ago, I get an awesome surprise when my childhood best friend shows up to help me with the wedding. Previously, she led me to believe that she was busy and would barely be able to attend the wedding, and it made me a bit sad. My best friend has been one of my and only true friends since I can't even remember. Back when we were kids, we used to do everything together, and we were starting to grow up. We would talk about helping each other get married, and we only separated when she went away for college, and a few days later, permanently shifted there due to work. I still saw her, but only twice or three times a year. When my wedding got fixed, she was the first person I invited, as I wanted her to be there for me more than anyone else. She was happy for me, but told me that she would not be able to make it since she was very busy with work, but would try her best to show up to the wedding, as I'd already mentioned. This really made me sad. But it turned out that she was just doing all of this to surprise me. Well, one day, I was stressing while planning things for the wedding and Lily showed up out of nowhere and honestly, at the moment, I thought it was the best gift anyone could have given me. She told me that I was stupid for believing her because she would not have missed my wedding for anything. So everything was going very well and I was very happy to have all of these people I loved helping me prepare for a special day. A few weeks went by quickly and I was very surprised that things were going very smoothly because there was always a problem with things like this. My problem started about three weeks before the wedding, as Lily randomly asked me if I was sure about Rob. She looked a bit concerned, so I told her that I was completely sure. Rob was a great guy and I fully trusted him to keep me happy and vice versa for the rest of our life. After I said that, she seemed convinced. And when I asked her why she wanted to make sure, she just said that she wanted to be sure about my life partner. It was a bit weird, but nothing I could not imagine her doing since she cared about me as much as a parent would. So, I just took it as her being overprotective of me and making sure that I knew that I was getting into something like this. So, almost a week later, Rob came to see me and told me something that turned my world upside down. First of all, he asked me to come with him to my room so that we could speak privately. This made me think that it was a big issue because he would normally tell me about minor issues in front of everyone. He looked scared and stressed to tell me what it was, which it made me worry. It was clear from his face that he was still debating what to do. So I asked him to please tell me what happened and he started saying that he really didn't want to do this to me and he tried his best to keep it from me, but now he could not hide it. Rob said that for more than a week now, my friend Lily has been coming on to him or hitting on him nonstop. He had to repeat the same line almost three times because I could not believe what had just come out of his mouth. I also simply could not process it and just kept crying and saying, no, she wouldn't do that. He said that he's sorry for being the person telling me about it and he tried his best to keep it a hidden, but now things have gone to too far. My heart was completely shattered and I had tears in my eyes and I didn't know what to do and told Rob to tell me if this was some stupid joke that they were pulling. But, unfortunately, he did not say yes, not even once. He just kept repeating that he was sorry and that my childhood best friend had betrayed me in this way, and after I calmed down a bit, I told him to explain what had happened in detail, and he did. So, of course, Lily has known about Rob for a long time, as we've been dating. She was literally the first person I told, both when we started dating and when we got engaged. She and Rob had an okay relationship, at least from my perspective, and would even text each other plans to surprise parties or when she was sending a surprise gift to me. So you can understand why it sounded absolutely absurd to me when he said that she was hitting on him. He explained that for him, it had always looked like Lily liked him a little too much. But due to the kind of bond I and she had, he always assumed that she just tried to look after him because of how much she loved me. He always thought that her love for me was the reason behind her unnatural affection for him, but he was wrong. 
Rob said that from the day that she landed her uh, here for my wedding, she's continuously texted him and has been openly asking him to sleep with her. He said that at first, just like me, he thought that this was some kind of joke or a test and kept asking her to stop it. But when it continued for a few days, he started getting scared. He said that he wanted to come directly to me, but saw how happy I was because of her, and he didn't want to ruin it. As more days passed, Lily kept making passes at him. And when he finally told her that he would tell me if she didn't stop, she said that she didn't care. Lily tried to guilt trip him by saying that if he went to me, it would ruin my years of friendship if I believed him and would make my last few weeks of the wedding a disaster. She also told him that if I did not believe him and instead believed her, it would ruin our wedding and our relationship, which took years to build. Well, even though he was telling me all of this, I still could not believe that my Lily would do anything. Like, uh, nothing like this until she sh saw the proof. He said he kept deleting their text, so he did not have much proof in the form of it, but he still had some sort of recent ones and photos that she sent him. The text looked like the ones that he told me about, but once I took a look at the photos, oh, I felt like I've been stabbed in the back several times. She had sent him photos of him wearing, uh, exposing clothes and a few more that I didn't even dare to look at. I told him that's enough. And after apologizing and consoling me for a bit, he left, since he had some important work to do. I was so hurt that my brain wasn't even working. For a good enough time, I could not think about what I was going to do and just stayed in my room sobbing. After about an hour, I still could not imagine why the person I had loved so much had decided to do this to me for no apparent reason. I kept asking myself questions as to why all of this happened and why she wanted to sleep with my fiancé when she never seemed to be into him, at least to me. I started wondering if she secretly hated me for something. I did not remember, but could not be the case. While I was having this debate, she called me to ask where I was and when he would meet. I just told her that I was busy today and would only see her tomorrow. I didn't sleep a wink that night, guys, and spent the entirety of it thinking about why she had tried to essentially destroy my marriage. I also could not sleep because I knew what I had to do the next day and I wanted time to pass as slow as possible, and I also hoped that somehow the next day I would realize that I had hallucinated all of this due to stress. But unfortunately, nothing like that happened. I had to come face to face with reality. Even though I didn't want to see her face, I asked Lily to come to my house and told her that I had something serious to talk about. She came, and she did not look scared at all. I told her everything my fiancé had told me, and she looked very surprised. She immediately denied doing anything like that and told me that instead of her, Rob had actually tried to come onto her. I didn't even hear her out. I told her that she had already stabbed me in the back, and now on top of that, she's trying to turn me against him. At this point, she had tears in her eyes and I felt a little bad, but I kept going because she deserved it. I told her that I could not believe that she decided to do this to me. With tears in her eyes, she said that she had done nothing. When I told her about the photos my future husband had shown me, she looked very shocked and told me that she could explain. At this point, I had already had too much of her and just asked her to tell me why she did this, but instead of explaining, she kept denying, denying and denying that she had done that. So I gave her one last chance, and when she still denied it, I asked her to get out of my house. Well, she reluctantly just left, right? Just walked right out the door. And honestly, it was soul-crushing to do that to a person I had loved and cherished so much. Even though she kept begging me, I did not give her a chance to explain. Since I thought she deserved it, I felt bad doing it. And I still feel bad a few days later. But I keep thinking that I did the right thing. Since then, I've cut all contact with her, but she has kept trying to contact me nonstop. I feel really bad, I'm heartbroken and sad, and still can't believe my best friend would do something like that. Can anyone tell me how I can recover from this before my wedding? And if what I did was the right thing to do in this situation, guys, that's all that I ask. Update number one. Hey everyone, it's been about a week since my post, and firstly, I want to thank everybody for their kind advice and suggestions on what I should do next. To be honest, even though I managed to kick Lily out of the house and ignore her repeatedly, I somehow still could not bring myself to believe that she was capable of something like this. I knew that the evidence was right in front of my eyes, and it was my own fiancé telling me that all of this was true. 
But for some reason that I could not understand, my brain kept drifting towards other possibilities until I would remind myself that there was nothing else that could have happened. Throughout all of this, Lily continued to call and text me, even though I kept refusing to hear her out. She called so much that I had to block her number, and even then she did not stop. This made me think that maybe there was something else that was happening. But when I spoke to my fiancé about it, he assured me that he was sure it was her who did all of this. He also warned me not to listen to her as she could easily manipulate me into believing her and that I should focus on the wedding. Even though my heart was telling me that I should give my friend a chance, I still decided to take Rob's advice and focus on the wedding. So, with a heavy heart, I decided to forget all about this and try to be happy for a special day in my life. As soon as I decided to let it all go, the next day, uh, this happened. So, yesterday, as I was deciding uh, something, one of my friends asked me to go to my room to see something, and when I asked what it was, she said that I should go alone and see for myself. I went there and was shocked to find Lily waiting for me in my own room. I guess that she had asked a few of our mutual friends to help her out, and as soon as I saw her face, all of my anger came rushing back, and I told her to get the hell out of here before I hit her. She said that if I wanted to, I could hit her, but she would only leave after I heard what she had to say. I told her that I didn't want to even look at her, let alone hear her speak, but she kept insisting. She said that throughout all of this, um, all the years, I had trusted her with everything, and now she wanted me to trust her once more. After a lot of convincing, I agreed, finally, and she told me something that was equally absurd. She said the opposite of what my fiancé told me happened. She said that my Rob had been hitting on her since the day she arrived, and she had not mentioned it to me because she felt that he was joking. After a few days, when she kept rejecting him, he somehow got access to her private photos and blackmailed her. He wanted her to sleep with him, or he threatened to release the photos online. This was simply unbelievable, so I told her that whatever she was trying to do was not going to work, and she said that she's telling the truth. From her facial reactions, it actually looked like she had been through it. She said after he had tried to blackmail her, she threatened him to stop texting her, or she would come to me and expose everything. That's when he panicked and came to me and told me a fake story so that I would simply not believe her. I told her that I could not believe any of this, and she asked me to trust her. She said she only had screenshots of text as proof, but was collecting more. She told me that she only wanted a favor. She wanted me to look into my fiancé and see the type of person that he actually is. After saying all this, she left for an entire day. I've been wondering what I should do. Literally, right now, I'm stuck between a rock and a hard place. I can't discern who's right or wrong. I'll update you guys on exactly what happens. Updates. Number two. Hey guys, it's me. Yeah, I'm back for an update. Update number two. Well, it's been a few days since Lily confronted me, and this is all that's happened after hearing her side of the story. I was completely stressed because I didn't know what to do. I was having the biggest dilemma in my entire life because one a side of me wanted me to believe my friend, but one side told me about the doubting my fiancé was wrong. I kept arguing with my mind thinking that my fiancé had absolutely no reason to do any of this, and that too right before our wedding was happening. Since he had shown me proof, it seemed unbelievable to me that he could even think of doing something like this. But then I thought that I would have said the same thing about Lily if I had not seen those photos. But no matter how much I wanted my friend to be innocent, there was no way I could even think that the person I was about to marry was guilty. Having this constantly in my mind back and forth with myself really did a number on my mental health, and I could barely get any sleep or focus on last-minute preps. My fiancé kept asking what was wrong, and when I didn't answer, he assumed it was because I had lost my friend. After a few days, I decided that I should give my friend a chance, even if she was doubting my fiancé. I was sure that he had not done anything, but I believed that I could look into it once for our friendship's sake. So yesterday, almost one week before the wedding, I checked my fiancé's phone for the first time in my life. I'm very trusting of a person, and since I've always fully trusted my fiancé, I've never had to check his phone or do anything like that. I made up a reason, and since he fully trusted me not to look, he gave me his phone. I looked into it, thinking how much of a fool I was and how ridiculous I would feel when I saw that his phone had nothing in it. 
but what I found completely flipped my world upside down. On his phone, I found several, and by that, I mean lots and lots of women he was chatting with. The most surprising thing about all of this is that I know all of his female friends. And even if there's one or two who I've not met, there could just not be 20, 25 of them. I saw that he was in a constant contact with them, and when I started reading a few messages, it got worse. It was clear from the very first few messages that he wanted to sleep with most of them, and had actually already done it with a few. Some of them even knew that he was getting married and still didn't care. Well, with tears in my eyes, I read the messages my soon-to-be husband had sent other women, promising to take them on holidays, buy them expensive gifts, and even promising to marry one. It completely shattered my heart, and for a second I felt like I was going to faint. I regained my composure and asked someone else to give my fiancé his phone back. It was immediately clear to me that my fiancé was guilty, but I didn't want to accept it. I also felt bad about doing what I had done to my friend, so I called her. I asked her to meet with me and planned on apologizing and asking for her advice on what I should do. I'm getting married in six days, and I've discovered that my fiancé, who I'm in love with, is a, a cheater, a liar, all in all, the worst person I could have possibly married. Update number three. It's been a day since my last update, so I met Lily the next day and I immediately apologized to her for not trusting her and for not giving her a chance. She's such a great friend that she did not even acknowledge it and told me that she didn't care about what happened as long as I discovered the truth about Rob. I told her everything that's happened and she could not believe how much worse of a person he was. I was in tears already because that's how bad it felt about the things that I had said to her and thinking about what I had discovered made it worse. She consoled me and told me that everything was going to be okay. At this point, I had lost all hope, and I didn't know what I could do moving forward. The wedding was in a few days, and all the preparations were done, so uh, many family members, friends, and other people were coming. I was panicking, thinking about how I was going to cancel it, and Lily told me that no matter what I decided to do, she's with me. Except in the case where I decided to go forward with the wedding, in which case she was ready to fight me. I told her that I was never going to marry him and that she should calm down. Well, when I asked a question, Lily tells me that after my fiancé accused her and got her kicked out, it was still hard for her to imagine me thinking that she had done something like that. But even when I threw her out and cut her off, she still kept trying because she was never going to let me marry a person like him. When I told her that I was planning on confronting him, she said that I should not do that and gave me a better idea. After about half an hour of thinking it over, we came up with the probably the best way to get back at my fiancé, while also surprising him the way he surprised both of us. Lily tells me that confronting him would do me no good, since this way he could still do some damage by lying to my family. He could easily turn the situation against me and make it look like I had done something, and he could, you know, get himself to cancel the wedding blaming me for everything. I'm not saying that he would be able to pull it off, but I would not put it by him. Well, I agreed with her, and we came up with a plan to expose him right before the wedding started so that he would not get any time to come up with an excuse. This would also allow me to easily cancel the wedding without having to separately explain things to everyone. Lily warned me, though. The plan looked good. It also meant that I would be sharing my very personal stuff with everybody at the wedding. I told her I'm fine with it, and asked her if she's fine with it, and she said she wanted to do this more than anything. My next update will probably be after everything happens, and I'll let you know how it goes. Final updates. Update number four. Hey guys, I'm back. About a month has passed since my last update, and I want to apologize for keeping you waiting. So lots of things have happened, including the cancellation of the wedding day, so let me pick up from where I left off. So after meeting me, Lily and a few of our close friends worked together so that every part of our plan went smoothly. I didn't let my fiancé notice anything had changed and acted the same with him. Fortunately, he bought everything and he had no idea what he was waiting for him. The day of the wedding came and I was really nervous. Everybody assumed it was wedding jitters, but only a few knew that it was really not that. Rob looked very happy and it was still unbelievable why he was marrying me when he was not even a bit loyal to me. Right before anything started, I told everyone that I had something to say and something to show. The projector was brought up and set up and 
Rob, uh, most of the people looked very pleasantly surprised. They all probably thought that this was going to be some sweet message. I started telling everyone how perfect my relationship was and how Rob looked very proud until I started talking about things that happened recently. I told everybody about Lily and Rob looked shocked that I would bring up the topic. Right when I started saying that I should have trusted my friend and not him, I could see his soul leave his body. He started protesting, saying that he was right and that he had proof. So I called Lily's name and she came out of the crowd and started playing the proof that we collected on the projector. Everybody was shocked when they saw the text that my fiancé had sent Lily. And obviously, as we had expected, he started saying all of this was fake. Right as he was saying that, I showed everybody proof that I collected from his own phone. I showed people how many women he was speaking with and even had a call recording with some of them who said that they had no idea he was in a relationship. Some even admitted to sleeping with him this month and after I had proved everything, I ended my speech by telling him how much I trusted him and how he had betrayed me by not only cheating but also by trying to get me to cut off my best friend. He had tears in his eyes and seemed genuinely embarrassed and apologetic for his actions. It's too late. I refused to hear any form of apology he has, and I told everyone that I was canceling the wedding and was cutting him out. It was a lot more of a hassle than I had previously thought, but I still managed to cancel the wedding. Rob's family members were furious at him and tried their best to convince me to um, not do this. But I said that it was not their mistake and they don't need to apologize to me or waste their time. It was only a few days after the wedding that it hit me how sad I actually was since I had lost my partner. But I kept convincing myself that he was not the person I had believed he was. So I had probably lost him a long time ago. A few weeks later, I learned that a few people attending the wedding had made small vlog type short videos of it, including all the drama. Many of these small vlogs had gone viral on TikTok. And they ended up being locally viral stories. I also got a few calls to comment, but I refused since I didn't want to publicly humiliate Rob. But it turns out the damage has been done. A few days later, I discovered due to the story that he had gotten fired from his job and was going through a very tough time. I felt a little bad, but not as much because he essentially deserved it. Now I'm trying to move on with my life, and although it looks like this is going to take some time, I'm genuinely happy.